I can end the video proving that there was no eternal security in the Old Testament. Now, there is eternal security for today in the time of the Gentiles, but that was not the case back in the Old Testament. I'm going to give you some scriptures proving that. So first, go to Exodus chapter 32, verse 31 to 33. It says, And Moses returned unto the Lord, and said, O oh, this people have sinned a great sin, and have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive them, or forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Hmm, interesting, you're blotted out. Deuteronomy chapter nine, verse fourteen. Let me alone that I may destroy them, and blot out their name from under heaven. And I will make of thee a nation mightier and greater than they. So again, you're, you see the thing of them, them being blotted out. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 20. And the Lord will not spare him, but then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man, and all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him, and the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. And then, of course, Psalm chapter 69, verse 27 and 28. See, again, the thing of them being blotted out. Add iniquity unto their iniquity, and let them not come into thy righteousness, and let them be, bl sorry, let them be blotted out of the book of the living, and not be written with the righteous. You're blotted out. That simple. You're not uh, saved and eternally, eternally secure like you were today. Now, what about being sealed with the Holy Spirit? Because obviously the Bible teaches in Ephesians 1.13 that you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. But was this the case back in the Old Testament? Well, no, it was not. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and the evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. So, our first Samuel chapter 18, verse 12. And Saul was afraid of David, because the Lord was with him, and was departed from Saul. And of course, Psalms 51.11, it says in Psalms chapter 51, verse 11, Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. How does that line up with what's taught in the Pauline epistles? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22. Now he which establisheth us with you in Christ hath anointed us, is God, who hath also sealed us, and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Ephesians 1.13, whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And Ephesians 4.30, and grieved not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. How does that line up? The Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Take not that Holy Spirit from you. You know, if you do these things, you're blotted out of the book of the living. How does that work? They were not sealed with the Holy Spirit back in the Old Testament like we are today. That simple. So don't believe these, these heretical lies of the non-dispensational heretics who say that salvation has always been the same and they're preaching faith alone by Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Even though Jesus Christ hadn't even died on the cross yet. And there's another question too for all you non-dispensational heretics out there. If salvation has always been by faith, what was the point of Jesus dying on the cross? And also, what was the point of animal sacrifices too? Because according to many, many verses in the Old Testament, animal sacrifices were an atonement for sins. So if, there was, if it was by faith alone and just... That faith, just faith alone, just no works involved. What was the point of animal sacrifice to atone for sins? I, I remember this, this little heretic Ed Fenner come out and said, "Oh, it, it's an act that showed faith." Where is that anywhere in any, anywhere in the Old Testament? It never says it's an act that showed faith. It clearly says it's an atonement for sins. It, you know, if the if the soul does this thing, you know, go to the priest, he'll do, he'll do an animal sacrifice, and it will atone for their sin. It wasn't just an act that showed faith. And what about the future with the time of Jacob's trouble? What if you take the mark of the beast? You know, how is it by faith alone? So if it's by faith, or I'll say it this way: If it's by faith alone, that means could you take, that means you could take the mark of the beast? Because hey, you're saved by faith alone, and you're eternally secure. See, it's satanic and demonic. It is getting people ready to take the mark of the beast, making them think. Remember, again, Ed Fenier, he comes out and says that refusing the mark is only an act that shows faith. Really? So when it says Revelation 14, 9 through 11 says if any man takes a mark, they're they, they're damned. That's only an act that shows faith. So basically, according to him. If they don't take the mark, they're just simply not showing faith. Huh? No. The mark of the beast, and our, you know, another common tactic of non-dispensationals non and post-tribbers, is they'll say, well, they won't be able to take the mark. They will, they will know not to take the mark. Well, here's a question. Here's how you stump them with that. Just ask them, okay, what if a true Christian in the time of Jacob's trouble knows it's the mark and takes it anyway? Are they still saved? Answer that one, please. Because they'll say, well, no true Christian would take the mark, but what if they do? What if someone knows it's the mark and knows not to take it, but takes it anyway? You know, how does that work? Are they still saved? So, 
the bottom line is, is that non-dispensationalism, it is satanic, okay? And you can't be dispensationalist and be non-dispensational salvation. It just doesn't work. Again, all these verses, you know, the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. You know, I'll, I'll blot him out of the book of the living. You know, add iniquity unto their iniquity. They are not saved by faith alone, and by, or by grace through faith, I'll say it that way, and sealed with the Holy Spirit back in the Old Testament. You know, this non-dispensationalism, again, it's satanic, it's demonic. So, don't be deceived, God bless you, goodbye. Thank you.